Well, hello, and thanks for joining me. Um, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a review, which is always fun, because I get to play with uh, some new shiny lock sport stuff, and of course, I get to showcase it to you. Uh, now, it's worth saying, I don't get paid to do reviews. Uh, companies sometimes uh, contact me, send stuff out to me for me to look and to showcase, um, but it's always on the understanding that the uh, any opinions that I give are my own. Um, so yeah, let's get into it and see what we've got. So today we are looking at a, a lovely set from Multipick. Now just before we get into this, I think it's, it's worth mentioning that uh, Multipick do have a promotion coming up. Uh, that promotion is going to run from the 28th of March to the 14th of April, and that's 2024. Uh, they've got a lot of stuff discounted, um, and this particular set, which we're going to look at, has got 20% off. Uh, so if you're interested in this set, if you like the video, um, then I'm going to leave links below to Multipix website. I'm going to leave links to this specific set. And I'm also going to put my disc code, disc, discount code on there as well from Multipick, uh, which they've been kind enough to give to me so I can pass it on to you. If you use that code, you will get 10% uh, off uh, across their store. I don't know if that's uh, in conjunction with the offers that they've got coming up on those dates. So anyway, let's uh, have a look at this and we'll get into it. So first off on the outside, we have got these uh, this lovely um, leather case, which uh, all the multi-pick kits that I've looked at come in. And I've got to say, it's really nice quality as other multi-pick kits that I've looked at. So what is this kit? This is the multi-pick elite 39 piece lock noob essential selection lock pick kit which is quite a mouthful but it's actually uh, quite an extensive kit so i'm gonna open it up in a sec and we can have a look in it but i just thought i'd show you that uh yeah lovely luxurious leather case so let's have a look at what we get in this now this has been put together by lock noob who's obviously very experienced knows what he's talking about has been doing it for years and uh you know knows what knows what he likes and knows what works so i think he's put together this kit uh from all of multipix products as a sort of everyday use kit so it's got a bit of everything in it so this kit if you're looking at buying um uh, uh not not a starter kit but if you're looking at you know getting an extensive lock pick kit this one should have everything in it from tensioners to rakes uh, dimple flags there and we've got some picks so i think what we'll do is we'll uh you know have a look at each section individually and i can go through um you know what i've sort of thought my, my thoughts on this um as we do this review so i've been using this set exclusively for the past five days or so and when I do a review, rather than just opening it up, having a look at everything, showing you what's in it and leaving it at that, I like to actually use uh, each tool um, and yeah, just sort of get, get a real feel for, you know, um, the quality and the uh, usage of those tools, usability, I suppose I was looking for. So what we'll do is I'll get these out of this lovely uh, leather case um, and then we can, uh, yeah, have a look at each section. First up, we look at hooks. Uh, now, in this set, we have got uh, 11 different hooks. Um, we've got these five here and these five here. Now, the profiles are exactly the same, um, and the, the only difference is the thickness. So we have got the 0.6s. That's 0.6 millimeters, which is about 23 thousandths. And they're your kind of everyday picks. They're the ones you're going to use all the time, uh, particularly if you've got open keyways. Uh, and these ones here are the 0.4 and these are the 15,000 so they've got very very thin uh, shafts uh, not for beginners you will, will tend to bend them turn them into a noodle um, now let's just have a look at these as with all multi-pick picks uh, these are where's my focus gone there it is these are sort of sandwiched metal so you've got the pick the pick steel which runs the full length from the tip to the tail um, and then you have got uh, uh, like a metal scale on one on both sides uh, and they're sort of internally welded together really really nice and both sides are engraved we've always got the multi-pick logo you've got this nice emblem up there which has got the, the uh, originator of multi-pick it's his initials in there and then down the bottom as always we've got information which is a really nice touch with multi-pick uh, picks it's an elite pick this one it's a pn31 so if this it turns out to be your favorite pick um and you know you want to sort of get another one you can see that it's a pn31 you know exactly what to order it tells you it's a 0.6 mil 
so you know it's a thicker uh, pick you've got the individual serial number of this actually uh, this individual pick which is a, is a really nice touch i think that shows that they care about the individual uh, picks uh, and then we've got a date stamp down there so this one was manufactured in 2023 and all of these picks have got exactly that same markings all down the bottom uh, the 0.6 mil i've got this uh, jazzy kind of 80s design uh, with all lock uh, pick profiles and stuff etched onto it which i do really like uh, where did that one come from just there and the 0.4 mil exactly the same exactly the same construction obviously just with the, the thinner steel uh, for the pick and they just have the 0.4 mil etched on the back and that's true of all of the 0.4 mils so these profiles let's just have a look at these if i grab this set up we can have a look at them a bit closer uh, so these three here are the SS Dev profiles, which are tried and tested. They were developed by the SS Dev folks, uh, who um, yeah developed these tips. And a lot of different manufacturers uh, have got their own versions of these. But we've got a really deep hook there. Um, this is also quite a deep hook, but a bit of a skinnier tip, not quite as deep as this one. And then you've got this one, which is a short hook. And when I first looked at the SS Dev profiles, it almost looked like there was like a manufacturing defect at the back of the pick. As you can see, it's got a bit of a flat spot, but that's part of the design and just helps you, you know, uh, get up to reach certain types of pins. Uh, the SS Devs, as I say, tried and tested, really nice picks. And they have been in my kit for years now. I think I got some 15,000 SS Devs, uh, probably, about, uh, probably about a year into picking. <clears throat> and I've gone through, gone through several of them. Um, and then we've got these other two profiles here. Um, and these are, let me show you there, you've got the PN07 and the PN31. Uh, this one is kind of like, uh, it's not quite a short hook, I'd say it's a medium hook, but we've got quite a sort of a nice long swoop on it there. Um, and that one is a really nice one. I think that was one of the ones that I was reaching for quite a lot to, uh, to pick through. Uh, this pick here, um, again, not quite a short hook, it's a bit deeper than that, but you can just see uh, on the inside profile of the hook, there's like a little scalloped section, so it, it means that the the pick profile narrows in almost, not, not to a point, but it gets really thin as it, as it gets up into that curve. And I really like this profile, I've not used this one before. As I was testing this kit, I found it was uh, awesome for uh, these kind of Yale profiles. Um, and they can they are a bit paracentric some are tighter than others um, but what I like to do when I'm picking them um, is kind of rotate the pick uh, rather than sort of lift him from the bottom or lift him from that little ledge of ward in there I kind of put the pick in and sort of lift it up and rotate and then move it you know back to the next pin and turn it around but the, the height of this profile just fits really nicely on that ledge it can rotate around um, and it's just like a bit of a magic key i found for these profiles it's a really nice one and one that i would definitely be uh, using all the time uh, so with those profiles um, those profiles there that i mentioned uh, these are exactly the same but of course they are slightly slimmer if i just take uh, these two here which are you know identical profiles um, you can just notice on the 0.4 picks, on the 15 thousandths picks, it's just slightly wider um, as the uh, this pick shaft goes down to the handle body. And I think that's just to give it a little bit of extra strength uh, because these aren't going to take as much kind of lever and punishment as the 0.6 mils uh, will at all. Um, so that just gives it you know a little bit of extra stability, which is a nice touch and will help with sort of longevity of the pick. And then we've got this one here, um, which is kind of not an oddball from the set, but as I say, we've got five of the same profile in 0.6, five of the same profile in 0.4. This one here is a 0.4 as well, as you can see from the back, uh, the engraving on there. And this one is uh, pretty much a short hook. It's got a much thicker uh, shaft actually than the other 0.4s, as you can see there. It's sort of thicker all the way down. Um, so and and yeah, you've got that sort of you know real short hook profile. Um, I'm a I'm a fan of deeper hooks over short hooks. I've got to say. So when I look at a set, 
and what hooks have been chosen. I, I, I quite often find that there's not enough deep hooks in there. I much prefer a deep hook, a deep hook over a short hook. So this kind of selection is really sort of suits me. But we do have a couple of shorter hooks in there and then we've got this one here. And I found uh, when I was picking, I, uh, one of the things I did is I've got a box of Euro locks uh, which this is one of and I just pick through that entire thing and pick through my box of rim cylinders and mortise cylinders you know just just to sort of these put these picks through their paces uh, and this profile here was one that I had out all the time quite often when I pick I will cycle through you know say you know three different profiles sometimes when I'm picking a lock and this one here I used uh, a lot. I think I mean I would I would quite like to see a 0.6 uh, of that profile in the set um, but that's just just a sort of small niggle and it's easy something that you can upgrade um, but that yeah that one was really fair, really nice and because I was using it all the time in the 0.4 it's got that thicker shaft so I think it will stand up to more punishment. Uh, on the subject of multi-pick handles, I do think in general they are on the smaller side. They're not tiny, but they're sort of I think they're comparable to Sparrows and Peterson. So if you're used to those picks, then uh, these you know won't feel too small for you. Uh, but I do have sort of quite large hands, and sometimes they feel a bit small. But as I say, I've been using this set exclusively for the last uh, few days, just picking through tons of locks. Uh, and I found them really, really comfortable uh, and don't find them sort of, you know, slippery or slick or anything like that, which some people, you know, uh, find with metal picks. I certainly haven't found that at all. So anyway, that's the, uh, the profiles uh, for the hooks. So I think next we'll have a look at the rakes. OK, I said we'll have a look at the rakes and we're going to have a look at those. But we've also got these other tools that I'm going to kind of group in with them anyway. And we can talk through all of the profiles. Uh, now, all of these are the 0.6. Just see them there. So they're all the same thickness. And rakes generally take quite a lot of punishment um, when you're pulling them in a lock. This isn't a rake. It's a half diamond. But uh, yeah, you, when you're zipping it and that sort of thing, you can put quite a bit of pressure on them. So you want them to be sturdy tools. So it makes sense for them to be in that uh, thickness. Uh, so yeah, let's just have a look at these. So we've got a half diamond there. A lot of people do use this to pick with. I gym, it's, it's kind of one of those uh, borderline picks I think it's kind of a hook and it's kind of a rake and you can kind of zip with it and it's kind of in the middle and I, I, I just thought I'd put it with a rake so that's where I think it should be but you might disagree but that's okay um, so we've got that profile there so yeah really really useful and uh, going back to when I was talking about short hooks and things like that um, this is if I just cover up that little bit on the end you can see that um, half diamonds are pretty much short hooks and can be used to single pin pick so you've got that option there to do that with that pick of course uh, this one here isn't a pick at all it's just a probe <clears throat> and I think as a new picker I didn't really understand what they were for um, but it is really nice to have in the set and I'm glad it's included so certainly when you're picking tubular locks uh, I've got one just there on the desk uh, you need a sort of pretty flat tipped straight piece of metal like that to sort of reach down and set those pins so of course you've got that option here so it's nice to have it in there uh, you can use them to set sliders and yeah various other sort of applications so definitely great to have that in the kit and then we've got the ball now this is a profile that I think I used when I was first picking I think the first kit I got came with this one and the double ball or the snowman and um, they can be used for uh, kind of like sticking sticking them in a lock wheeling them around hoping you get things set but it does kind of work there's not a, as far as I know a specific application for them but it's nice to have in the kit uh, sometimes rakes can be more rounded like these ones sometimes they can be you know quite pointy like these ones over here on the left um, and this one here because you haven't got any sharp points on it it can slide in and out of the locks really quite well so when you're looking at wafer locks that sort of thing you can just get this in the keyway wiggle it all around and you know quite often get the open so that's nice to have in the kit as well so looking at weight rakes we've got um, these ones here which are the based off of a Christina Palmer uh, she did lots of studies and she came out with these profiles released them to the community um, so they've come they've become pretty standard in a lot of lock picking kits and it's great to see them here 
Now I will point something out which I did think was a bit odd. So we look at these pair. If we look at the numbers on these, you've got the PN74 and the PN73. Uh, and down here we've got the PN70 and the PN69. And I think both these profiles are almost identical. Um, so if we get them and if I just put one on top of the other like that, you can see they're pretty much identical. I think, I think that this one here at the back, which is the, what is it? It's the PN74. I think the tops uh, of these peaks are slightly more rounded. These are slightly more pinched, but it's, it's just a, a infinitesimal is that even a word it is, it, is a, it is a tiny difference between the two and i don't think uh that it's really going to make much difference uh, and these ones here uh, are exactly the same i find uh, once again i think that one on the bottom uh, is slightly pointier at the peaks um, and the one on the top is slightly more rounded but again once i put these profiles on top of each other um, yeah, I really, if there's a difference, it's a fraction of, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, a third of a millimetre or something like that. And I don't think that when you're getting a rake and you're rocking it about inside a lock and zipping it in and out, that that is really going to make a difference. Uh, so for that reason, I think that two of these rakes are kind of, they can almost be looked at as spares. So I think, I mean, just for me, I think it would have been nice to have some other rake profiles in there. Uh, you do uh, the Christina Palmer and her multi-pick do do some of these in sort of just a, a sort of two hump version cycloid rakes I think they're called it's cycloid rakes cycloid yeah that's two isn't it yeah so they do in the cycloid one and perhaps it would have been nice to have those in there but of course this isn't the DMAC kit it's the lock noob kit it's not my decision but I think that's just a, just a very sort of small gripe that I think they're just they're far too similar to to be included really so but that said, you know, look on the positives. It is nice to have spares. Right, so moving on, we're going to go to the next profile. And this is the Bogota, Bogota profile. Never sure how to say it. Um, but it's the sort of classic three peak and they're, sharp, they're quite sharp peaks. When I started picking, I think I got a couple of rakes. I got a camera worm rake. and a, I think the Bogota was the first rake that I ever wanted to get. I saw Bosnian Bill using it a lot. And it looked like a magic key in his hands. And I did find that in, you know, a certain amount of locks, that's definitely the case. So you've got three identical height peaks just there. And I think you can sometimes turn it around and kind of single pin pick with that tip. I've never found that. Uh, the, I was really sort of too successful with that myself. But I know it can be done. So, so it is really nice to see this one in there. I think that quite often in a lot of new kits, you've got the Christina Palmer, you know, these sort of wave style rakes, which are really, really good. And they're probably the ones that I reach for most. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you need the sharpness of that Bogota, and that's really, really nice. Right, so these last two profiles were actually designed by Lock Noob, which is, you know, always impressive. And you can see designed by Lock Noob on there. So we've got the PN76 and a PN75. So the 76 is the Monif, and the 75 is the uh, Bona. And they're very similar, one sort of slightly longer, one slightly shorter. Um, and they're very similar to the, to the Bogota rake. But the difference is that rather than having where this one's got three peaks that are the same height, this one you've got two high ones and two low ones. And that is uh, really nice because, you know, sometimes, look at that, keep it in there. So you've got high pins and low pins there. So this one is lower, this one's higher, and this one's lower again. Um, and I find I don't do a great deal of raking, but... Uh, these rakes and those rakes there work particularly well with locks that have got quite flat bitting. Uh, but when you get ones like this and some of the more extreme, you know, bitting versions with uh, a rake like this, or if you're sort of doing rocking, you can hit the hit the peaks and the troughs of the key bin. And I find uh, I, I was doing, I did actually do loads of raking with this set. Uh, while I was kind of forming my opinions on it and I really really like these profiles they're really good uh, so that one there which is the Monith uh, very similar but it's like all oh, I, I sort of see it as the shorter version of that one so we've got a low peak and a high peak and again you know really good to sort of uh, get in there for certain bittings and that's that's the thing about rakes um, you need a nice sort of 
selection of different tools, different shapes. And we've certainly got that here. I mean, obviously we've got the double ones in there, but even even sort of taking that out of the equation, we've still got you know five you know very different profiles that will you know help you get into a lot of locks. Okay, so that's the that's the rakes. There's some uh, yeah, as I say, really nice selection there, and some nice variation, uh, which is always good. So next up, let's have a look at the tension wrenches. All right, tension wrenches, turning tools, whatever you want to call them. This is a really nice selection. One of the things you find out when you start uh, getting into lock picking is that as important as it is to have a nice selection of hooks and rakes, it's you know as important, if not more important, to have a good selection of different sized uh, turning tools, tension tools. Um, to help you along because of course all keyways all key are different no one turning tool is going to fit into every lock so uh, in an ideal selection you have a, yeah, a, a whole selection of different sizes different shapes different profiles uh, because you will come across that lock um, that you sort of struggle with and hopefully within your uh, selection you'll have one of those that uh, is going to you know, help you get into it. So we've got a couple of, let's just go through these, there's all sorts here. So these are kind of the wiper inserts, which are just sort of bent over. This one's pretty standard. Uh, we've just got that bend at the top bottom, that's a bend at the end of it. Don't know what's going on my focus today. That goes into the bottom of the keyway. Let's grab a lock, I've got that one there. Goes into the bottom keyway like that, pretty standard. Um, I've got to say this one is super slim. I'm not sure. I don't have my um, measuring doohickey device thing, but uh, this one is yes, yeah, really thin. Um, and as as I say, as well as having different profiles, you need different thicknesses. You know, there, there's a keyway out there, and I don't know if it's this one. I mean, it fits in there pretty well. Where this one will be absolutely perfect for. So yeah, a lot thinner than all the others. Really flexible, but that is going to come in really useful. Really like that. This one looks very slimmer, similar, slightly thicker, um, but this has got like a nice taper on it, which I do really like in the bottom of the keyway, um, and that allows you to sort of uh, because it's slightly thinner. Oh, this lock's already picked. Uh, yeah, because it's slightly thinner, it just allows you to get um, a perhaps a slightly deeper hook in there, which is, yeah, that's really nice. And here we've got another couple of a very similar design, but these ones have got a twist in the shaft. And this one is uber long. I mean, it's like you could have someone's eye out with that, couldn't you, if they got too close to you? Um, but once again, it's really nice to have variety. You might have that lock where that comes in. You know, you just need one that's that long. Um, so yeah, with the slight bend in it, just means that it puts a bit of a spring in it. Now some people like that, some people don't like that. But once again, it's important to have good variety. These are all stiff uh, tensioners, so it's nice to have the choice. You might want to try one out that's got a bit of a spring in it, and you've got it there, even if it is about six feet long. But I do, I, I do like that. It, again, it is variation. So here we've got the standard top of the keyway uh, tensioners, the classic sort of look, which have got a deeper end on one side, thinner end on the other. These ones are all marked with Multipix logo. Um, and yeah, you've got, this is a, yeah, SP14, SP13, SP12, and we've got the thicknesses on there. Um, so perhaps you'll reach for this one, it's too thin and you need to go for a thicker one, and you can see that's the point two. You want that one, that one's a bit thinner. It's nice to have that on there. Uh, these just fit in the top of the keyway, as you'd expect. And we've got that one there. Will he fit in? Yes, he will. Um, so if you've got a lock with a the, the plug face is flush with the lock, you'd use that one, which is slightly shorter. And if you have... Um, yeah, an American lock, something that's got a sort of recessed keyway. You might want a deeper one because that short one won't go in there. So, yeah, you've got the choice there. You've got the two different ends and the three different thicknesses, which is really good. So this one here is just a double-ended version of uh, similar to these ones here, the sort of bent wiper inserts. We've got a thin one on that side, slightly longer on this side. And this one, although it isn't tapered, is slightly thinned down on one side. And I think once again, that helps you get into different keyways and just allows a bit more room in the keyway for you to get a pick in there. Doesn't fit in that keyway very well, but it's going to fit in other keyways really well. Once again, the variety of tension wrenches is really, really important. So I think this is a really good selection so far. Now these ones here, 
Um, there were some uh, ones like these from Multipick in the Christina Palmer kit I got. These are not quite the same. These are slow, a slightly longer return on them, but I absolutely love these uh, tension wrenches. They are fantastic. I don't know the thicknesses of these particular ones because they're not written on them. Um, they are all oh, very slightly different, uh, slightly fatter. That one there is the, the thicker one um, and has got the shorter return. That one there is the thinnest of the ones and it's got this sort of longer return. Uh, but they can be used in top of the keyway or bottom of the keyway. Let's see if this one fits. It doesn't fit in there, but I'm sure a neck size up. Yeah, that one would fit in there. So we could use that as bottom of the keyway. Um, but you can also use them as, you know, top of the keyway tensioning just there. And I just find they're really comfortable. They're really stiff, which I like from uh, a turning tool a tension wrench. Um, so, yeah, that, I, I'm really, really pleased to see these ones in here. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, these two here, slightly odd choice, but it's kind of all down to preference. So this one here is actually sprung. We've got a little kind of thing ret ret restraining it there. You can see it sprung like that. Let me just reach over into my box of locks. Bear with me. As I say, it's great to have different turning tools for different locks when you need them. And this is great for things like um, shutter locks or this smiley lock, which is a dimple lock. Um, yeah, and that fits in the keyway quite nicely. And you get your dimple picks in there and you've got good control. Um, this particular key where you'd probably struggle to tension it with any of these that's the one you need so it's nice to have that one in the kit um, and this one here I think once again is for wafer locks some wafer locks have got like a sort of dust shutter on them quite a lot of auto locks so I think that's what it's designed for now I didn't actually manage to use this tool at all because in my uh, collection of locks, I don't have any that have got that dust shutter and I didn't have any that this really fit into. Um, that's not a bad thing because one day I'll come across that lock and I will have that tool in the kit. So, you know, I really like that. Just just a full selection. I, there's, there's nothing missing from this particular um, set of tensioners. I don't think there's sort of a bit of everything there. And certainly, you know, to get through, you know, a wide variety of locks, you're completely covered with this selection. So it seems we're not quite done with turning tools yet because we've got these ones here. Now the reasons I put these in this section is because these are uh, specific for dimple locks. That's not to say they're exclusive for dimple uh, keyways, um, but you, you probably could find a lock that these would work in equally well. And once again, it's nice to have the choice. Uh, but these are meant for dimple keyways. And we have got the Multipick logo etched on. We've got the BMS 10, the BMS 8, the BMS 9. This is 1.5, this is 1.2, and this is 1.2. Now, these two are not doubles. We've got a slightly different shape. If we look at the end there, that one comes down straight. That one is tapered on the inside, which will come in invaluable for a particular keyway one day. And, yeah, great to have the choice. Uh, we've also got this uh, little uh, Allen key and of course that is for this grub screw that sits up here and that holds this flag tip in. So what have we got here? We have got two multi-pick dimple picks. Now these are really nice. I have reviewed this set before. Uh, you can have a look at that in the review section if you look at my playlist. Absolutely fantastic picks. Really, really like them. Um, and this is like a pared down offering of those. We've just got two flags, but you know, sometimes that's all that you need. Uh, so this one here is the Elite G Pro 03. This one is the Elite G Pro 06. And if there was a standard dimple flag, it would probably be that profile there. Uh, it's not too deep. It's not too short. It's not too fat. It's not too thin. It will probably get you into the vast majority of sort of general dimple uh, locks that you're going to come across. Uh, there is one slight difference. These are mirror images of each other. You've got left facing flag and a right facing flag. Hopefully you can see that. If you don't know anything about dimple picking, why do you need a left and a right? Let me just quickly explain. So with this particular uh, padlock, uh, of course being a padlock, we've got to go for uh, clockwise tension to get this open. When you pick a dimple lock, if you're tensioning clockwise, you need to pick anti-clockwise. That's just to sort of overcome spools. Uh, it's not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes you can mix it up, but you will probably find that you have more success if you use that method. So if we were to use this flag here, he's going to fit in really nicely. Um, the, the flat part of the flag goes at the top of the keyway. Oh, just knocked the camera. 
Um, so we're tensioning clockwise and we're picking anti-clockwise. So this would be the pick that we would select for this particular lock. Uh, if it was the other way around, then we'd pick this one. And of course we'd be picking, that would be picking clockwise. We'd, we're rotating that tip clockwise in the same way as our tensioner. And we don't want to do that, uh, generally speaking. So I think um, this was something that in this particular set really stood out to me. I don't know of any other uh, lockpick set that combines uh, standard sort of hooks and tensioners for your, your general sort of pin tumblers and dimple picks. Um, so, you know, if you're branching out into sort of picking dimples, you're not ready to sort of... Uh, go for the full kit you just want to try it out this is absolutely fantastic you've got the two profiles you can of course buy extra profiles um, and using the allen key just swap out those tips um, and you know you could buy another 10 profiles and just use the to these two handles uh, to sort of cycle through those profiles so yeah really really nice to include this in this kit i think that's absolutely fantastic Right, in conclusion, what do I think of this kit? I think it's pretty bloody good. Um, I don't think there's a great deal that I would change if I was putting a kit like this together. We've got a lovely selection of hooks. We've got a whole smattering of different tensioners, different profiles, which is great. Uh, lots of rakes and kind of zipping tools in there. We've got our probe and we've got our dimple picks. I mean, this is not a kit for a beginner, because, especially because of the 15 thousandths picks. Uh, beginners tend to use uh, too much tension and it results in bent picks. Uh, they can quite often pick the ward in. I did that myself when I first uh, was learning to pick. So if you've kind of gone through that process and you're looking to branch out um, and, and get a more extensive kit to get you further into your lock picking journey, then I think this could well be the kit for you, especially since it has things like dimple picks in it. So you can branch out into those as well as the sort of, you know, normal sort of pin tumblers that people pick. Um, there isn't a great deal that I would change. I mean, there's a, as I say, there's a couple of bits in there that I might not find a great deal of use for. Um, but because this uh, this kit has got some great tools, this is going to last you years. The case is going to last you years. And as you progress in your journey, you can upgrade these tools, chop and change them. You know, perhaps you find you don't use the rake so much, so you can you know put some other picks in there and just make it your own. But as a starting point uh, for a, a picker that's getting to the, the more advanced stages um, of their picking journey past the sort of the, the basic kind of picks, uh, this is a fantastic step up. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend it. I think it's a great kit. As mentioned, this particular kit has got 20% off uh, on the dates that I'm going to show down the bottom there. Um, and there's a whole other bunch of stuff that's for sale on Multipix website. It is worth checking out. They do some great products. And of all the uh, products that I review uh, from Multipix, uh, there hasn't been anything that I've found lacking as far as quality goes, um, as I've said uh, earlier in this review. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found that interesting. And I'm going to leave a little DMAC logo up there so you can hit that if you want to subscribe and see more content like this. I do try to, you know, mix up my content with reviews and picking and uh, making stuff and all that sort of thing anyway <laughs> thanks for watching i'll see you on the next one